Vicky here at Download Festival and I'm with John of Skillet. How are you today? I'm great, it's good to see you. I like your jacket. Thank you very much, yeah. I do very like unique, it. I like Tassily, it. Yeah. yeah. No one else has it. I know I haven't seen anyone else with it. That's the cool thing. That's what you need. You need something unique. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen anyone with your jacket either. Okay. Yeah. Nobody messed with it. I love this. I, don't, I got it years ago, and now I think it's more in style now than it was five years ago when I bought it. So yeah, that happens. Pull it back it? out of the closet, yeah. baby. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> So you guys haven't played yet, have you? You're playing later on today on the second stage, the Opus stage. Are you all ready for your set? I'm, um, I am emotionally ready. I need to warm up my voice. Yeah. But I've got 30 minutes in between interviews and that. I'll warm up my voice, then I'll be ready. But I'm so glad to be back. Um, yeah. We haven't played Download in, in a while. And, uh, and as everybody's been saying, it's not raining. Yeah. The last time I was here, it was like, I mean, it was like a hurricane. And so I packed all my rain gear. And that yeah. guy, that gave it a day, I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. So I'm uh, very excited to be back. Yeah, I'm the same. I've got welly boots and anorak in my car ready because I know <laughs> what it's like. I've not needed to use them at all. But that's nice that it's sunny. So. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's been a really nice weekend so far. And so many people here at Download are obviously so passionate about rock music. If you was to describe to someone the true spirit of rock, what rock music is, what would you say? <laughs> spirit of rock music. I mean, I do think it's, it's, in some ways it's changed. You know, I think the original intent seemed to be, I've got a second, a chance, three minutes to write a song that's about what I believe. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. You know, that's kind of where the rebellion kind of came in because it, because it's it's my chance. Yeah. And, uh, and and I'm a fan of that. You know, we should. That's what art is. Art is a chance to say this is what I feel, what I believe. This is the way the world should be. You know, there are things like that. And I think that's still the spirit of rock music, certainly. But I think that the spirit of rock music and rock fans has so broadened out to people who felt marginalized, not understood, alone, didn't, you know, ha have people to relate to or this or the other. Music, rock music had this special place in them where they feel understood and they, they feel like they get what I get, you know, and that's why it's always such a tragedy when somebody, we lose somebody, we lose a great, you know, uh, uh, Foo Fighters drummer or Chester from Linkin Park and we lose these people that we don't know them personally but we feel like we do because yeah. we listen to their lyrics and I say I, he knows how I feel that to me is what is powerful about music yeah yeah that's so true and I think a lot of people can relate to that I mean the amount of times where we've listened to albums and really felt that connection with a band and then if you ever stop to think about it you think they have absolutely no idea who I am, but I just have such a connection with what they're saying. But that's yeah. all about being a rock star, isn't it? Well, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I know that I feel that way about musicians. Yeah. You know, so when I, and sometimes I get to meet those musicians yeah. now. Yeah. Tommy Lee from Motley Crue or something. And I'm like, dude, I, I am such a huge, I'm like a kid, you know. Yeah. And so when I meet fans and they tell me the craziest stories, this John, your song, help me not commit suicide. Yeah. I met someone uh, just this year who was in a coma for months and they were not getting brain activity and us and the doctor, this is what she told me, I have no idea. The doctor said that, that her mom came in and brought ski her favorite Skillet record yeah. and played Skillet and she had began to have brain activity. And this girl ended up waking up from her coma after about six or seven months. And she, and she says she credits it to my music. I'm not saying I believe that. I don't know what it does, yeah. but I know for her, that's what it means. And it's always hard for me to imagine that anybody else would care about my music the way I care about other people's. So it, it's kind of cool. It all comes back around, you know, so you, you kind of get what you give in terms of that. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty cool story, actually. And it's pretty awesome, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> I, but I have heard that music can sort of touch parts of the brain that nothing else can, so that kind of makes sense. But Absolutely. that's really awesome that they were able to share that story with you. It was well. completely bizarre, you know, yeah. so whatever it's worth, music is powerful for sure. Yeah. And you're a band that tours quite a lot, right? So when COVID hit and everything like that, how did the band deal with that? Yeah, very strange. And not only do we tour a lot, um, we, we're still to bring our 26th year of Skillet this year. And my wife, who is also in the band, she plays guitar for the band, we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. So we've been married and on the road the entire time. That's 
we had kids and and my kids tour the world with us ever since they were three months old you know and uh, all of a sudden we're at home so we had to learn how to be a married couple at home yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny but you know I think we did pretty well with it it was strange yeah. not being out the hardest part for me personally honestly was that some of my friends did not have they did not fare very, very well and so that was a lot of the reason these songs are new record Dominion yeah. a lot of these songs have this very uh, inspirational, like, don't give up. Yeah. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And the reason is, is because some of my friends, I have a friend whose daughter um, tried to commit suicide during the, the pandemic. I have a, a friend whose nephew did commit suicide during the pandemic. I have a friend that fell back into drug abuse. He'd been, you know, clean for 10 years. Yeah. So depressed. Can't talk to anybody, can't leave his house for months at a time, and he just said, I can't do this. Yeah. And that affected me. So it didn't affect me personally, but it affected my friends, and that affected me. And I wanted to write songs about that. Yeah, and I think your track Refuge must be about that, actually. It mm. went, now you say it. Um, and yeah, when I listened through your album, actually, one of the things that stood out to me is how collaborative your band members are with each other. I just felt like a togetherness that just came across that I don't always feel from other sorts of albums. Um, do you think that's true of your band? Well, that's really cool to hear. I mean, I hope so. I mean, we certainly, there certainly is a very uh, family atmosphere of, yeah, of Skillet. it comes through. Yeah, yeah, and I think people comment on that regularly. Yeah. And so, being that I'm not a listener, I'm always like, that's interesting, but I hear it a lot, so yeah. it must be. Yeah. And I think that that feeling of, of family and community kind of goes into the audience. Because I, I always hear from Skillet fans, they're like, when I'm at a Skillet show, I feel like I'm with family. I hear that, I see it on social media all the time, and it always kind of floors me. I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. So I think people must be picking up on that very positive kind of vibe. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I think it's also just how... Um, I can't really, I can't think how to describe it right now, but it's just like, I don't know, uh, like, is it your drummer who sort of like sometimes get, does vocals and things like that, and it just, it feels more like, you know, any band member could come and collaborate in any way that they oh, like, right. and therefore it, and that really makes it come across a bit more. I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. I think that there's a, definitely a lot of, um, there's a lot of facets of Skillet. Yeah. And so it can have a duet between yeah. me and Jen, that, you yeah. know, singing back and forth. and Or it could be a very down song. It could be a really heavy song. So there's a lot of dynamics and a lot of different ways it can go. And so it feels very versatile yeah. and eclectic in that way. And, uh, you know, kind of reminds me of Meatloaf in a way. Meatloaf was like that, kind of. You know, yeah. you never knew what was going to happen on a Meatloaf record or Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. You know, I'm a big Fleetwood Mac fan. So what's next for Skillet? Well, we are so excited to be touring Europe again. You know, yeah. it's been uh, since 2019, and it, the fans are just so electric. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been actually absolutely amazing. Yeah. So we're going to be touring this record for the rest of the year. Yeah. I certainly hope to be coming back to Europe again. Uh, I mean, everything is very much opening up now. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. not just UK. Europe is opening Everywhere. more. Yeah. It seems like that's the trend. Yeah. So I hope to be uh, going around and making it happen baby yeah all right well hopefully we'll see you back here in the uk at some point absolutely i hope so thank you all right well thank you very much for speaking to us you Cheers. got it thanks